All right, so you finally decided to download Rapelzi and start to play. Now, because the day been going really well along for the last 15 years, a lot of things have changed and a lot of things have been put in the game. So I will try to make as easy as possible for you guys to be able to start playing. What's up guys, this is your boy Rustian and in today's video you guys can be seeing the basics of starting to play Rapelzi. Now, just so you guys know, this is one of a series of guides that gonna set you for success in the world of Rapelzi. And now with the video. Alright, so the first thing you're gonna do is the character creation. As soon as you click on create character, you're gonna be given three options of races. So let's take a look in the first one. All right, so the first race we're gonna be looking at is Azura. Now, those are the descendants of the God of Destruction. Great race uh, in many ways. So we have the three base classes. You have your warrior, you have your magician, and you have your sorcerer or pet class. When you look at the strider, what is your warrior side you're going to be having the options of going assassin and slayer what are going to allow you to use double swords or double daggers or you can go shadow hunter to dead eye and that will be your crossbow class what means distance attacks etc dark magician your mage classes you can have kills magician that becomes void mage or warlock to corruptor now, they're both solid classes. Uh, Corruptor gets a lot of heartache because that's usually your PKers in a lot of ways. It is a very strong class, but it does take some time for you to be able to get used to. And then we're going to have Sorcerer that becomes Battle Summoner and Overlord. Now, that's a very strong class right now. But it is in many ways a very expensive class because not only you have to worry about your own equipment, you will also have to have equipment for every single one of your pets. So for people just starting, I would advise to pretty much stick with the warrior classes in the beginning until you get used to the world of Rapelzi and can accumulate enough money to actually apply to those other classes. When we look at the Gaia, which is pretty much your neutral class, you're going to have your Fighter, Kahuna, and Spellsinger. So, same thing when you go to Fighters, you're going to have your Berserker and Marksman. Berserker being your Tank Damage Dealer class, and Marksman, your Archer. Now, when we look at the Kahuna, which is pretty much your Mage class, you have Magus and War Kahuna. Um... They are fairly solid classes. I do feel they still need to have some rework done. But not only for damage, you also have healing on those classes. So it's a pretty decent class. Um, I would probably wait after they rework those classes to pick one of them or just start right now. Again, when you look into mage classes, it does become a little expensive. It is a little bit harder for you to start playing the game before you get used to everything. So again, I would stick to your warrior classes. And you have your spell singer, what is the path class for the Gaia. And at last, we have Deva. So Deva is pretty much the light. Okay, you have your holy warriors, you have your mage class, what is your healers, and you have your breeders or pet class. So this is right now uh, one of the strongest class for warriors and you can go one of two routes, Knight and Templar. Templar basically are shield users, uh, great to take damage, but it takes a little longer for them to cause damage in comparison to a mercenary, but they're both solid classes. And then you have your Cleric that becomes Cardinal and Oracle. Great for buffs, also great for healing. Um, 
there was a point that Cardinal was actually one of the best classes to actually cause damage. I cannot tell you for sure as of right now, but again, it is a mage class. It usually will take a little bit longer to get used to, so play at your own risk. And then you have your pet class, the Breeder, Soul Breeder, and Master Breeder. I played with this class, I enjoy, I would still say, as of right now, the strongest pet class is the Overlord. But as every pet class, it's a very expensive class. Alright, now that you picked your character, you just gonna need to go and make the character your own. Choose the color of skin, hair color, face shape, and everything else. And pick a name. Alright, so right now we need to customize a couple of things. One of them is you're gonna want to equip all the free items that is given to you, like your backpack, your wings, your cape, and set up your loot pack. So you don't have to click in every single thing that drops from creatures. Also, while fighting on the training island and getting a little used to things, I would say as of right now it's not necessary. Since the game itself gives you a lot of boosters, what would make the training island monsters way too weak for you and just take a long time for each level. So what are we going to do? We're going to click on our Hidden Village Pass and head out to the Hidden Village. Now as soon as we get there, we're going to set up our quick items. I usually like to keep my Hidden Village ticket pronto on the quick bar. Just in case I get overwhelmed by monsters, I can just click on it and be teleported automatically to the Hidden Village. The next thing I'm going to set up is I'm going to put my Four Leaf Clover what raise the amount of drops that I get from any one of the mobs. As of right now, you're giving 500 Grove Potion Supremes, what should you last you until level 200 if you make good choices. And just as I mentioned, you're not going to use the Growth Supreme until you're past level 120. Until then, just use the two Growth Potions that you get and your Stamina Savers. Next, you're probably going to want to set up in the bar your impact amplifiers, what going to make you cause twice the damage to any creature, and your altered almighty pieces. Now, as an advice, you will probably want to use one of them right in the beginning, but then you probably want to take them off the bar and just use the altered almighty pieces non-enhanced. They don't give as much boost for you, but you probably need a lot more boost in higher levels, while well, not so much in the low levels. Now the next thing you're going to do, you're going to look for a teleporter. Now, as you see, you actually don't have to pay to get teleported to the main cities. I usually feel it's a lot easier to just head up into Horizon, mostly because the mobs are really close to town. And I'll hit on that Impact Temp Fire and Almighty Pieces. And this should give me a nice boost on attack. And now, after you get to level 10, you're gonna get your basic Almighty Pieces. What I would just switch then into your quick bar to make sure you don't have to use the Enhanced at any time. And also, just use a Stamina Saver and Growth Potion. That will actually give you, using both together, 200% more XP per kill. I usually don't do it right away, but after I reach level 10, level 13, you may want to hit the K key and start leveling your skills. Now, your basic skills, don't worry about, just level them all. And around this level, you should be able to max it all. The only thing that you won't be able to do is the J level, because you're only allowed to actually raise one J level per two levels that you have. And alright, now finally you hit level 20. So as of now you should be able to maximize everything including your J levels on your basic skill tree. And after you get that done, you go look for a job supporter in any town so you can do a class transfer. And FYI, you should have enough points 
to start working on your first job skill tree. But now we need to start working on getting some better buffs. At the Hidden Village, you're able to get for 7,000 a pop the Hidden Village buff and the player's buff. But if we keep going that way, it's gonna take forever. So we're gonna actually run to our first dungeon. Now we have two options. We can just run all the way to the dungeon and that's what I'm gonna do. Or you can farm over 3000 rupees and just use the dungeon teleporter to Relics of Arid Moonlight Dungeon. But hey, let's go east Enjoy a little bit of the countryside. But now, since I got to level 20, one of the things I got awarded was Deva's Blessings, what will actually give me all the player buffs for half an hour. So let me add that to my quick bar and use that to be able to kill those monsters a little bit faster. And now, a couple of things. Dungeon monsters, they'll give you a lot better equipment Rupees and XP in comparison to wild mobs. So as you can see fast enough I already reach level 30 and have almost enough to be able to head back to the hidden village and get those extra buffs. You also should take some time to look through all the loot you got and start upgrading your items. And that includes your bag. So you don't get bloated and heavy too quick. And now back to the hidden village and get those buffs. After buffing yourself up, you want to head back to the dungeon and stay there until around level 50. And now that we're back at the hidden village, I want you guys to open your inventory. It looks like a mess, so we're going to fix that up by hitting the button sort. What it does is everything that is higher level gonna be put up on top. So that will help you to choose what's a better equipment to use. Now, after you pick everything you can use and discard whatever you don't, we need to get some oomph in our weapons. So the way to do that is you click on the creatures tab in your inventory. Then next, you're gonna click on this mental and you're gonna pick all the cards you collected. Now, don't worry about it. The only cards you have to worry about not actually dismantling are gold and epic cards. What you probably will not have at this point yet. Now, dismantling those cards, it will give you awakening stones. Now, what you need to do to use those is just pick a weapon, go to the enchantment bar, and use the awakening stone with it. What it's going to do is it's going to give you bonuses for this weapon. Now you just need to awaken every single one of those weapons and pick the ones that suit you better. If you're playing a warrior class, I would say that P attack and attack speed is probably what you're looking for. And now just go find the dungeon teleporter and head to the next dungeon. By the way, very important, all dungeons are pretty much lined up by difficulty level. So the next dungeon for your level is going to be the one right below the one you just left. But as you go down those dungeons, just make sure you keep taking a look in your inventory and sorting it to try to find the best weapon for your character. Because if you notice, right now I'm using level 1 weapons, what are not bad when I add all the buffs I have, but if I was to find a weapon actual my level with good added bonus from the Awakening Stone, I would be dealing a lot more damage. And now let's talk a little bit about upgrading that armor of yours as well. So I just got a half decent armor right now. And what I want to do with that, and I would say don't worry until level 50 and above armor. Now to enhance an armor, you're going to need to use cubes of the same rank as your armor. Now one thing about enhancing armor is up to level 7 enhancement. You don't have to be worried about your armor breaking with the next enchantment. But starting at level 8, if you fail on an enchantment, your armor will break and you'll lose it. So we're gonna use those cubes until level 7. So now I'm gonna create a fortune cube. Now to do that, you're gonna have to use fortune cube chips for defense. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You need to use 
the amount of chips for the rank, plus 4 times that amount in next stream power. And do you know how you get that material? Well, by dismantling all that equipment that you did not need in your inventory. And now I'm gonna take that level 7 enchantment armor and combine that with my fortune cube. Wasn't that luck this time, only got a plus 9 and I'm not risking since I only have one armor to go and enhance it again. But fortune cubes can actually get an enchantment from 1 to 5 levels above. So I could have fallen into a plus 12. What would be a lot better, but at this level it should be okay. And now as a reminder, you should do the same thing for your weapons. The difference is you're going to use attack chips instead of defense. And that will allow you to get better damage against monsters. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's just really basics for you guys who are just starting the game. And I'll be working on more guides to help you guys to succeed in Propels. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the game.